And you talked about things that we have to let go of. Uh, and before I, before we talk about this last example, uh, you talked about we have to let go, and I'm, I'm using a direct quote from you, we have to let go of the just hit go and money's going to fall out of the sky. Uh, this is like a cancer in sales today. And I, I just want to discourage folks as best we can from this idea that they're going to come up with a magic framework, start writing messages this way, put it all into my CRM and my HubSpot instance and my sales engagement platform, hit go, and bam, I'm a baller, I'm a baller, I'm a baller, right? Like, this is just not real. So talk to me about this. <laughs> <laughs> I saw what, So I saw one of the questions that it was specific about, you know, um, using people's name in the subject lines and has that fallen out of fashion? Um Gang, there, there's no one way of doing this, right? And, and I, th I think this is the risk in over-indexing on technology to do what is inherently a people-to-people -people job. Uh, I said it earlier. I will say it probably a thousand or more times in my my life. Uh, what works with one prospect is not guaranteed to work with another, even if there's like 98% overlap in the Venn diagram between their tenure, their responsibilities, their company profiles. We're still dealing with people and people are inherently fickle and unpredictable um and untrusting <laughs> rightfully I mean, so <laughs> of, people are a lot of things you know they, i'm big on analogies hopefully this one flies you know in baseball three strikes and you're out i'll let my 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 math nerd flag fly the the reply rate if you look at it on a on a on a graph over time, the reply rate over time is an it's an asymptote. It never reaches absolute zero. Tracy Hagem in a hot topic. If I had given up when my and granted I wasn't using, you know, a sequencing tool, but let's say for sake of argument, I had a three to four week initial outbound pursuit and that ended and she did not engage, I would have given up. That deal never would have happened. Right. My peers looked at that graph and said, if my chances of getting a reply are highest within the first three touches. And I can make a case to do five and keep my fingers crossed. But after that, it's not worth my time. I looked at it the opposite way, which was why would I ever give up? She still sits in my ICP. She works for Hot Topic. We sell to retail and e-com like she's the VP of e-com. Why would I ever give up on her? Yeah. Now, how I do that, how frequently the nature of the copy, how aggressive or consistent my ask in those emails, that's up for discussion. But giving up in my mind, not an option. If I have done the work to identify an account and people within that organization that I believe we can create value for, and the only obstacle is that they have not replied, then I'm going to keep trying until they tell me to go away. Yeah, we don't we don't have three strikes and you're out. That's something that we place on ourselves. This notion that like if we run the sequence and we feel good about the emails and it works like a bunch of the time with other prospects like this, and this particular prospect doesn't engage. Well, they're the problem, not me. No, just keep trying. Right, get creative again to subject lines. Like if you've been chasing somebody for three months and they haven't engaged, take a flyer, like throw that Hail Mary. Here's a subject line, Hail Mary. I've used it, it works, especially if you know they like football, right? Please, we're just looking for them to engage. Just get back to me and give me a signal to go on. But if we walk ourselves out of an account simply for lack of engagement on the prospect side, like that's on us, that's not on them.